Hello, this is John from caveofmusic.com and this is a tutorial on, well it's the first in a series of tutorials. In this tutorial we're going to look at creating a basic beat in Logic Pro 10. And uh, in, the, in the series of tutorials we're going to basically look at um, Logic Pro 10 uh, music theory and particularly uh, electronic dance music, so how to create it in Logic Pro 10. Before we begin, just a little disclaimer, I'm not an expert on any of these things but I just wanted to make for fun really, because hopefully it'll help some people, a tutorial that combines Logic Pro 10 with basic music theory and how to create basic dance music as well. Okay, so um, we're going to start by, this, this, is, this is Logic Pro 10 and I want to start just by playing you a little snippet of a song that I've been working on. Um, this is intended to have singing on it, but it doesn't at the moment. I've just got a synthesizer in the chorus standing in for a vocalist. So this is the kind of thing that I'll be showing you how to put together in this series of tutorials, starting with just the, just the basic beat in this tutorial. So let's play this. Okay, so you get the idea, nothing revolutionary and um, nothing brilliant from a technical perspective, I'm afraid. But um, it was a lot of fun to make and you can really have a lot of fun doing this stuff, that's for sure. Okay, so I'm going to start by creating a new project in Logic. So I'm going to go to the File menu and New. I'm going to close the existing project and just save it as well. So when my Logic Pro 10 opens, and presumably it's the same with yours, it wants to create immediately a new track with a software instrument on it. So I'm gonna just click Create. If, if you don't get that option, you can just go to the Track menu, New Software Instrument Track, and you get a software instrument track like that. I'm just gonna right click this one and delete it. So we've just got the one original track. So your music's gonna be divided into tracks and normally you have a different instrument playing on each track and Logic Pro uh, contains a bunch of different synthesizers uh, which you can use to make sounds however you want. But there's a whole massive bunch of presets as well which are sufficient for creating you know, uh, almost anything really, although you're probably gonna want eventually to get into customizing sounds as well, which you can also do in Logic Pro 10. So there are a couple of things to configure in Logic Pro before we get started. Firstly, I'm going to go to the Logic Pro menu here and I'm going to go to Preferences, Advanced Tools and I'm going to make sure that Show Advanced Tools is checked because sometimes I use features from this, uh, so it's good to have it checked. If uh, Up here we've got the LCD region that shows you information about your project and lets you change various things and if yours looks like mine then that's good you can leave it alone if it doesn't go to the view menu customize control bar and display and then go look under the lcd section go to custom and make sure you've got um, all this stuff checked i don't really use sample rate or very speed but the others i've got all of them checked especially i've got uh, tempo slash project end and I've got signature slash division checked. So those, those are really important and useful. I've also got positions and locators. These, these are useful too. And these other two things, MIDI activity loan meters um, are not so important arguably, but it's, it's good to have them checked. Okay, so I'll just click outside that to get rid of it. Now, um, having got that configured, um, because it really confused me when I looked at tutorials and I didn't see my LCD looking like they did in the tutorial, so I wanted to explain that. But now we've done that, we can select an instrument for our track, and I'm going to just use a drum machine to create a basic drum track. So over in the top left here is a button which open and closes the library, 
This is a library of different instrument presets you can use. So I'm going to open that. If you haven't got this, don't worry. This is that information track, which you can turn on and off with this button here next to the library button. But go to the library and then go to Drum Machine and Boutique 909. And this is an emulation of the classic uh, 909 drum machine. And I wouldn't know a 909 drum machine if one attacked me in a dark alleyway at night. But this sounds really good and it's a sound that's used a lot on electronic dance music. So I'm going to select that. Um, I'm going to, uh, before I actually create some, some notes in here, some MIDI notes to program this machine, I'm going to look at the tempo here because uh, electronic dance music, depending on how you define it, is, is going to typically start at, you know, the lowest is probably going to be like 116 beats a minute or something like that. We'll, we'll discuss all this kind of stuff later on in future tutorials. But trance music, um, which is what I'm kind of going to focus on here, high tempo electronic music, is typically more in the region of 140. So I'm going to double click this tempo here and I'm going to select that, let's say to 135. I'm also going to make sure that 4-4 is selected here. This just means the 4-4 time signature, which means that every bar, and we'll, we'll talk about bars as well, is divided into, um, four, um, into four beats and uh, one note, one, one kind of default type note uh, represents a single beat. So 4-4 four, four is, is the time signature that um, dance music is pretty much always written in as well as the vast majority of pop music. So you can't go wrong with it. And I'm going to make sure I've got slash 16 set here for the division control. And that's going to divide, um, for the moment, it's going to divide each of my bars into 16 different, um, different sections, basically. So it's each bar. So it, uh, if you look here, you can see the bars are actually numbered. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Each one of these is a bar. Each one's going to be divided into four notes. And we're going to further subdivide each note into four. So we've got 16 different divisions in each bar. And that is um, kind of a good setting for placing most of your instruments. But you can also change this if you need to. Okay, so... Now I've got all that set, I'm going to go to the, I'm going to go to the empty region in my track here, my drum machine tr track, right click it and go to create empty MIDI region. So I'll just leave that taking up the default one bar here. And now I'm going to go to this um, region uh, locator area at the top. And if you click in there and drag, you can highlight various bars with this yellow marker. You can also click the marker to disable it temporarily. Click it again to bring it back. So I'm going to just highlight this one particular bar that I'm going to work with for the moment here. And I'm going to click this yellow cycle button here. So I want that to be on so that when I hit play, it's just going to cycle over this bar over and over again. We can try that, hit play. We won't hear anything for the moment, but it's going to cycle around that one bar. So I'll, I'll click stop here. Now I'm going to double click this MIDI region and it brings up this MIDI editor in the bottom here. So on the on the left here, um, well, we've got some stuff here that we're going to be using. But after that, we've got this sort of piano uh, roll type thing. This is like a piano roll thing. Um, and there's a sort of piano thing that looks like a piano keyboard here. And again, we'll talk about notes and scales and chords and all that. But for the moment, all you need to do is scroll down, either using the scroll bar at the side here, or even better, um, if you've got, like me, if you've got a mouse with a scroll wheel in the middle, you can just scroll using that, scroll up and down. And we're going to find C1. And if we click C1, left click it, you can hear a um, 909 style kick drum, which is, is just ubiquitous throughout dance music everywhere. Um, now, you'll notice that in the top right, before we actually add some notes, in the top right of this window, the main kind of uh, arrangement window here that shows all your tracks, and also in the top right of the MIDI editor window, there are zoom controls. So we've got a vertical zoom control here, 
it's maybe easier to see on this window here, and a horizontal zoom control as well. So let's just, um, in this top window here, the track window, let's just um, make the track big enough that we can see this volume control. That's a volume control, which is quite handy. And let's just stretch this single bar out a bit for the moment. And I'm going to just scroll over to the left here using uh, my mouse. But you can also use this scroll bar here at the bottom. And you can also just click in the transport bar here next to play. There's a button that will take you right back to the beginning, which is very handy. So I'm going to click that too. Now in the MIDI editor region, let's also zoom this so that the highlighted yellow area, you can see this, this yellow highlight here, um, it highlights a single bar and it's the same down here. We're highlighting a single bar. It's just zoomed a bit differently. So I'm going to zoom in on that a bit with the horizontal zoom control in the top right of the window. Okay, so that looks good. Now let's go back to C1. If you hold down command, so you have to hold down a command key and then click in here, you can add a MIDI note. So that was some sort of hi-hat. Let's add another one randomly. And that was a, a clap. And you can also just select those just by clicking on them and hit your backspace key or delete key. Well, I guess backspace, because you're going to be on a Mac and it will just vanish. So I don't know if there's a, yeah, there's also, if you right click, there's also a delete option, but the quickest way is just to click it and then hit the backspace key and it goes. Now what we want to do is add in a kick drum. So um, this single bar is divided into four regions and each region corresponds to kind of one note basically. But they're further subdivided into four subregions. You can see by the sort of gray lines. I'm going to go to the very first of these 16 sort of subregions here and just next to C1 here. So horizontally aligned with C1. I'm going to hold down the command key and left click and that will add me a kick drum note there. So if, if you play this, you'll be able to hear that kick drum sounding at the beginning of every bar. Now I'm going to go to, to the beginning of the other kind of, if we subdivide this into four regions, I'm going to go to the beginning of each of these four regions and add in a kick drum. So just on the sort of C1, level with C1 here. So this is added in a kick drum. And if we play that, we should hear a, a completely regular kick drum beat. If it's not regular, you've got this one of these slightly in the wrong place. And you can just drag them with the mouse like that. So now it's not regular anymore. Let's drag it back to the right position. I've got um, snap here set to smart and I've got that set I've got snap set to smart in my track window as well. That's a handy setting to have because it means that your notes and your tracks are going to snap to the um, to a sort of fairly appropriate place most of the time. So you don't have to exactly get the mouse in the exact right place. It just has to be approximately correct. Um, if, if your note looks too long like that, you, you can just resize the notes just by um, dragging the right hand edge like that. So I just want mine to each take up one sixteenth of a bar here like this. Okay, so that sounds good. Um, if, if you want to make them louder or softer, one easy way to do that is if you just drag, if you just press down the left mouse key and drag around them all to select them all like that, um, there's a velocity uh, setting here and that basically kind of emulates how hard you've hit the key if you hit it on a MIDI keyboard. So I can drag that up and down and they, they sort of go more red as the velocity increases and get a bit louder. If I drag it down, they're going to get softer and we can't really hear them now. So I'll put that up to like, I don't know, let's say 100 or something, which I think is the default anyway. So that sounds good. And we can actually start and stop this either with these controls up here or just by hitting the space bar. So I'm just pressing the space bar now and starting and stopping. And because I've got cycle checked and this yellow area is highlighting the bar, it's just cycling around the whole bar when I start it. Let's make that a little bit more interesting. So we're going to stick with cliches here. 
um, and we're going to add in a snare drum on every other kick drum beat. So the snare drum for this 909 instrument is located on this note E. So if you go to C, and the, next no the next white note up is D. This is from C1. And then after that, we've got E. And um, I'm just going to go horizontally level with E. You can hear that's, you can hear that's, um, that's the sound of a snare drum, basically. And I'm going to go just above my second uh, kick drum, hold down command and click just there to add a snare. And I'll do that on the fourth kick drum beat, just above the fourth one as well. So now we've got this, um, we've got a kick drum that's going to sound four times every bar and the snare drum is going to sound twice every bar and it's going to be aligned with the second and fourth kick drum. And if we play that, if you listen to much dance music, you'll probably recognise that as a real cliché. You often um, hear dance tracks with a lot of reverb added to the snare drum, which can make it sound really spectacular but we'll leave that for the moment. And the final thing I'm gonna do is add some hi-hats here. So if you click around, you can hear the different sounds that you've got in your drum machine. And if we go here, so above C1, um, we've got two black notes there. And then we've got a group of three black notes. So I'm gonna to go to the middle of these three black notes here, which is a closed hi-hat. And I'm going to put that aligned with the first kick drum. So hold down command, left click, and add that right there. Now, um, just above that, on the black note above that, is an open hi-hat, which sounds like this. So I'm going to go to the, um, to the section that's just between these first two kick drum beats here. And I'm going to add an open hi-hat there. Then I'm going to go back and add a... I'm going to add a closed hi-hat al aligned with the um, second kick drum beat. In fact, let's put, let's put in all the closed hi-hats first. So just put them wherever you've got a kick drum, just above there. And in between all of these, I'm going to add an open hi-hat. So if I play that now, you're going to recognize this as, um, as a real cliche. Nothing earth shattering, uh, it sounds pretty good and you, you hear this in so many dance records and it's unbelievable and of course you can make that a lot more exciting in a lot of different ways but we're going to stick with that for the moment. So that's it for this tutorial and in the next tutorial we're going to add on, we're going to go on to, um, to adding a bass to this. So um, until next time, happy music making.